<laughs> oh, greetings and salutations, everybody. Some of you twice. We're back for another I... Elden Ring stream. Except not this time because we finished Elden Ring. I, yeah. I'm I'm really curious I, if I uh, if the sound's coming through the same for me as it is for chat. Did you like peak cut out twice there? Did I really? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I was sort of laughing halfway through. I'll I'll do my best to keep a consistent tone without Oop. out screaming. I mean, we're not. It's not going to be a horror game. Although by the end of this, maybe you'll feel differently. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> maybe you'll feel differently. Today we're doing something a little bit different, just because you know we finished Elden Ring. We could have started a different game, but Elden Ring's coming back pretty soon. So we decided to do a little bit of quizzes. Mm. Uh, both of us had an idea, uh, and I happened to finish mine first. So we are mm. doing my terrible idea first, which is ba -ba -ra -ba -ba, weird American history and quiz by brain cell number two. What are your, what are you expecting from this as a, as a non-American person? Uh, do you think you'll be able to get any of these weird crazy answers i mean i enjoy just having like playing a game and having a bunch of random videos up uh so <laughs> my hope is that i'll know three of these at the very least very fair i think you might even get a few more though <laughs> just because some of the answers i feel like you're you're i would consider you I would consider you an intellectual. Oh, okay. You have an intellect. <laughs> um, fair, fair. Sorry, that came out wrong. Let me let me rephrase that. I you are a, you are a fairly smart person. I think even if without any knowledge of American history, you'll be able to problem solve your way through some of these answers about what might actually be right, what actually might be wrong. That's fair. That's fair. I, I yeah. I feel like we're gonna get moments, at least once or twice where you'll have made the question being like oh this is super obscure and uh minor and i'll be like oh yeah i watched x thing blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> i'd be surprised if you've heard of any of these before well there's one in here which you may have heard of uh but maybe just one that's fair but without further ado are you ready sir as soon as i take a look at what did Wild send? Quizzes? I've never heard of that Quizzes, before. Yes. I think it's, I don't know if it's a game or a website that has a bunch of like quiz. There's a lot of like pre-made quizzes and stuff all over the place. Oh, pre-made. That's fair. That's fair. I'm not 100% sure. Oh, very fair. Yeah, no, I, I think I'm... I don't remember <laughs> it at the very least. I think I, I am good to go. Let's see how good or bad I do. What's the worst that could happen? Yep. Uh, combustion. Anyways, uh, yeah, first I guess. <laughs> question number one. When the Declaration of Independence was first signed in 1776, who was the first country to recognize America as an independent nation? Is it A, the United Kingdom? You know, the ones we fought independence from in the first place. <laughs> was it B, Russia, you know, our sworn enemy was it C Morocco or was it D Antarctica so what are your initial thoughts walk, walk me through your thought process okay do you want to know what my initial thought process was uh-huh when you ask the oh, question no uh, well, I, I, I uh I promise nothing but when you first uh, when you first asked the question I went oh yeah that's right I was watching a thing where they explained the first country and I was like, yeah, it was it, I, I would have thought it was France because uh, they were allies with the US. Um, but I remember in the video I was watching there, it was it was like a part of the Spanish Peninsula that I didn't know was part of the Spanish Peninsula. And there's only one name I see there that fits the bill. <laughs> Like I said, <laughs> answer, sir. is it Antarctica? <laughs> so my answer is C, Morocco. Final answer. You are correct. <laughs> the answer is in fact Morocco. Some would call Morocco the real G. 
Maybe they wanted to be our friend. Maybe they just knew we were going to be a super house of a country. Who can say? <laughs> Maybe they just wanted money. And to answer your question, Dead Goggles, the, the reason why U.S. history is because I wrote another quiz. And then I found out after I finished that quiz, uh, our good friend Noma here did not like that kind of quiz. So I was like, okay, what else can I talk about <laughs> while still being ridiculous? So I figured U.S. history kind of falls under that since I failed that class. Yeah. Anyway, That's, you're so, right. uh, for For <laughs> reference as well, the type of quiz he's talking about are the ones like the... It, it, this is an old thing, but like the impossible quiz, where it's like mm -hmm. the, the answers are designed to just mess with you. Exactly. <laughs> I can be a little bit of a sadist at times. I don't always have to be the one taking the beating. Maybe, uh, I, I, maybe I want to put the shoe on the other hand. Well, how I, about that? I think it's hilarious you call it a sadist. <laughs> it, it, is it not? Sadist. <laughs> but sadist does sound a little bit more like what you, what you uh Well, I'm definitely the sadist with. now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, there we go. That one out of three. That is correct. Morocco was the first country to... Uh, I guess, except the United States as its own independent nation. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> On to question number two. In 2001, a West Virginia politician was running an illegal lab. It wasn't until years later when he confessed to the illegal crime. He wasn't even caught. He confessed to it. What was the lab for? Was it for A, marijuana? Was it for B, cloning? Was it for C, Bitcoin? Or was it D, cybernetic enhancements? Okay, this one I don't know the answer to, so we're off to a good start. <laughs> Great. If it's something new and exciting, well, exciting might be a stretch. If it's something new, then I did my job well enough. <laughs> I'm, I'm immediately eliminating C um, because I don't think bitcoin existed at that time i'm like 99 percent sure <laughs> it went through my fake question <laughs> uh an illegal lab i mean a is the most obvious answer but i feel like it's too obvious b seems b and d both seem like so horrendously far-fetched that i feel like it's the same as a so uh, this one's tougher um, it's definitely quite a few things. Cy you cyber, expect, yeah. You have to remember, it is two thousand and one. Yeah. Or cybernetics a thing back in two thousand and one. And that's the but like, but I can see it being a thing where like their version of cybernetics is like, uh, yeah, I run this lab where we try to like hot glue gun computer chips to people's heads and then get. But yeah, no, it's true. That was only six months ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to go with the obvious answer. I feel like it's a trap, but I'm going to go with A, weed. Answer A. That is, in fact, incorrect. God. Fine. Would you like to make another second? Would you like to make another second? Another second guess? Another second <laughs> guess? <laughs> <laughs> my, my, so, would I like to make a second guess? I, I just, if I add more words to the way I speak, maybe this will last longer. Uh, okay, Trump. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if that, like, yeah, if I have to guess, an, or not if I have to guess a second time, but if I'm guessing a second time, cloning seems more legit or, like, realistic <laughs> than cybernetics. So sure, let's try B. In a former high school building, toddlers played in the daycare downstairs, senior citizens lunched in the cafeteria, and the entire Nitro Police Department worked out of the same building. Meanwhile, <laughs> in room 201, Mark Hunt, a Charleston lawyer who had been elected three times to the state house, paid two scientists to create a clone of his son. Oh my God. <laughs> he was only discovered after he had given up and revealed it himself. That is... It seemed he wanted to replace his son. <laughs> Maybe they had a bad falling out. God, I'm glad the reasoning was as ludicrous as I hoped. Like clone, he was trying to clone sheep. Oh, he saw a thing where we could like make a lot of money cloning cows. No, my son is a failure. I need son too. 
I could correct that. I don't want to correct it because I correct it and it makes it sadder. Oh yeah. no. <laughs> if you want what actually the true, true history about this. Uh, son passed his away. His son was born. Yes. Unfortunately, his uh, son passed away when it was six months old oof. Um, due to complications after birth. Um, and I good. think for, I want to say it was for three or four years that he was paying these scientists to attempt to clone his son. Damn. Okay. Tragic story, but still a very odd turn of events nonetheless. Yeah. And as you can tell, he was not successful. But he did say publicly that once technology is there, he will try again. Yeah, that makes sense. And we're only indefinite amount of years away from that still. That is in fact true. Hey, we, we've started kind of cloning woolly, woolly mammoth, right? Or was it just their stakes? I think it was just their stakes. Remember, I, I don't even think it was that. I think it was stupider than that. <laughs> I, I think I think that story was they found a frozen woolly mammoth and they cut off a piece of it to try and eat. And they said it tasted terrible. Oh, I thought they cut off a piece, some of its DNA, cloned it into like a ball of meat, ate it, and they were like, yeah, this sucks. That does vaguely sound familiar. So like that might also be true. But I like in terms of the terrible taste one, I'm pretty sure it was like it was they just fa they tried to unfreeze ancient woolly mammoth and they're like, you're a taste bad. And it's like, yeah, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> Go figure. Are you ready for the next question? Oh, okay, okay, we're going, we're going to the next one then. No, oh, good <laughs> shit, jeez. <geez. laughs> In 1827. I can John definitely believe Quincy that, Mattis. <laughs> John Sorry. Quincy Adams is the sixth president of the mm. United States. Want to send out an expedition to uncharted lands. Where do you think the proposed location was? Was it A? Alabama? Was it B, the Amazon? Was it C, the moon? Or was it closer to our hearts, D, the center of the <laughs> earth? Um, before we start off, I, I suddenly want lobster. Um, lobster? Yeah, lobster well, be, because the, the, um, what's it called? As soon as I saw his name, I just, I've been to the, uh, oh my god, what's it called? Now, a Quincy Market in Boston? Oh, it is called that, isn't it? I think so, yeah. It was, it's, it's a nice little place, um, but it, they, they were selling, like, a lobster gumbo thing there, and it was really, really good. Um. Is it too late to change one of my answers to Lobstertopia? <laughs> <laughs> Alabama would be hilarious. Um. <laughs> Um, I feel like the moon is a little bit too ridiculous because he would have, like, tried to keep it within the realm of, like, places that he would have thought they could have gone. Mm -hmm. And this is 1827. It's still pretty early on before the industrialization age, as far as I'm aware. However, aware, yeah. Based off of, so, based off of your logic for the last one. Oh no, he's using logic. Yeah, I know, right? They're being foiled very <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to think of if people would have thought that was feasible. And I, as far as I know, there's no one around the 1800s who had, who had figured out about mantle. Uh, which is the the first layer of the mantle is the first layer of rock um around the earth but then after you get past the mantle you get to the molten core that um, does sound or familiar. lava so i'm gonna say d center of the earth final answer i think i think your sixth president wanted to uh fi figure out that hollow earth where so that he could see King Kong X Godzilla, the new <laughs> order, sooner than anybody else. <laughs> and that is your final answer, you said. Is that I, correct? I think so. I think so. All right. That is, in fact, correct! <laughs> John Quincy Adams, rumor has it, wanted to go to the center of the earth. You want to take a bonus guess as to why? This one I do not have a slide prepared for. Oh, okay, that's fair. Um, 
he was either convinced that it was full of, like, amazing resources that no one else in the world had tapped, or he was convinced he could spread Manifest Destiny to there. 50-50. Okay, you okay, 50 /50. okay. I'll give you both at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> it is, in fact, the center of the Earth. Rumor has it that he wanted to form trade relations with the mole men. Oh my god. <laughs> it is worth noting, however, that this uh, history fact was never actually officially recorded by historians and may be an absolute ro uh, load of rubbish. Yeah, fair, fair, But it's been fair. spread around that's kind of an infamous rumor. <laughs> the mole people, you know, I, listen to mole dims. I love how even, like, the, if this was true, I love how even back then people believed there were mole people in the center of the earth. Oh, I, I wouldn't get that carried away. I don't think the rumor actually came about until, like, the late 1900s or early 2000s when it came out in, like, a TV show or something where it's like, ooh, weird U.S. history facts, and they just uh, do I some see. random stuff. It's hard to say, but no one's just proven it, but no one's also proven it, so... Mm, who knows? Fair, fair, fair. <laughs> <laughs> who really knows? Yeah. They could be still down there to this day, hoarding all their precious gems and all my <laughs> stellar courts. No, I've seen Kong X Godzilla New World Order. There's just a bunch of other Kongs down there. <laughs> and also a Mothra <laughs> ball that has psychic humans inside of it. Don't watch oh, how cute. King Kong X Godzilla New Order. It's not good. <laughs> it wasn't good? No. When did that movie come out? It must have been a while ago, wasn't it? Like two months ago. <laughs> it was that recent? Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. You're going to perform the nec uh, necromancy? Please refrain. He'll be very upset to see the state of the United States now. He might have <laughs> a stroke. Yeah, you know, I'm very fair. <laughs> Moving on. Well, look, Mr. President, we made a very nice mark in Boston about you. <laughs> It's first going to be the mole men. What are those? <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Number three, four. Number four. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. In the 1800s, a man by the name of James Addison Rivas almost got a hold of the entire state of Arizona. He almost came to own all of it. How do you think they achieved this? Is it A... Through a business monopoly of owning every large enterprise within the state. Was it B, a series of fake receipts? C, bribery to the high officials who did, in fact, control Arizona? Or D, aliens? If it's D, I'm going to lose my mind. Um... <laughs> Is it bad if I had said that the most fitting one would be C? <laughs> <laughs> it would be this new sitting, but unfortunately, that is incorrect. I didn't make a choice yet. <laughs> well, I'm ignoring your mind. I said nothing. We're really starting. All right, all right, all right. Is it A, business monopoly, B, fake receipt, C, bribery, or D, aliens? Go. What is <laughs> I just said C would be the most, um, the most in, in line. Um, you didn't hear any. <laughs> oh, okay. L mm, wild, like... See, here's the thing. I'm a pessimist at heart. Like, uh -huh. like a major pessimist at heart. Well, maybe not major. I'm a pessimist at heart. So, like, while a business monopoly... Also, Nitsuch, no, <laughs> it is not the hidden answer. <laughs> that would be up there with aliens. Um, <laughs> I didn't specify what kind of aliens. Yeah, maybe, Nitsuch... they were, maybe they were like, what, what is it? Foreign, foreign aliens? Is that what it's called for like immigrants? Uh, he's put, he's put forward his own answer, which is dick sucking. Um, but I don't believe that's correct. But we, who knows? Maybe it was the aliens who did that. Um, <laughs> that would have been better than the alien but, going to be honest. <laughs> um, but going back to what I was saying, as as a pessimist, I feel like I feel like fake receipts feels like it leads into like um, fraud um, <laughs> or like that like that kind of like bribery is still kind of the same thing. Um, I am so curious if that's true, Nitsuj, but I um, I've never looked into Scientology that much. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna go with uh, B, fake receipts. And that is San that, Francisco. <laughs> that is, in fact, correct! The answer is San Francisco! <laughs> the answer is B! Fake receipts. 
Mr. Revis, the so-called Baron of Arizona, is best known for his association with the Peralta Land Grant, a pair of fraudulent land claims. Under the terms of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo and the Gaddison Purchase, the United States was required to re recognize the honor of existing land grants made by either the Spanish or Mexican governments. Hmm. Revis used this provision by manu manufacturing a fictional claim and then generating a collection of documents demonstrating how the claim came into his possession. The documents were then covertly inserted into various record archives. In his initial claim, Revis claimed title to grant to the grant via a series of conveyances. When serious challenges to the claim developed, Revis developed a second claim by marrying the purported last surviving lineal descendant of the original claim recipient. <laughs> Do you want to guess? Well, I guess there's no point in guessing. I already have the uh, the little thing up on screen. <laughs> he was only... The only reason he got caught and his plans foiled and how he lost the entire state of Arizona was a general surveyor came and gave him an unfavorable report. Okay. He then went to the Suez government and sued the surveyor for $11 oh. million dollars in damages, which to present day would be roughly $403 million. And, and then uh, during and the that, investigation... Yeah. Exactly. During that investigation, during the lawsuit, the U.S. government realized, hey, all these claims are bogus. <laughs> and uh, thus his raid ended. <laughs> it's good to know that there is a long history of hubris. <laughs> oh, don't you love to see it? It's the American way, if they do say so. <laughs> uh, I think it's just a, it's a universal way, but fair, fair, fair. Oh, uh, goodness. Yeah, the meddling kids. <laughs> if only... If only he didn't sue the meddling kids, he may have gotten away with it. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, the next question, number five. During the Cold War era, and for those who do not know, I'm sure you you know this, Noma, but mm. the Cold War era was a series of, I want to say, technological and propaganda attacks between the United States and Russia specifically. Uh, but during the Cold War era, West Virginia residents requested aid from the USSR or current day Russia. What do you believe they requested from Russia? Do they request A, a bridge, B, ammunition, C, winter clothing, or D, financial assistance? <laughs> so it's not my final answer yet, but for okay. some reason, in my in my head like neurological activation happened on a on the bridge on the bridge yeah. why do you think that happened i don't know i feel like it was again like something i was watching at some point that was like weird us facts or like the strangest whatever's and it was just like yeah if you build us a bridge we'll definitely totally turn traitor on the rest of America. We're definitely not milking you for money. Um, because I do know that there was a lot, a lot, a lot of attempts to uh, turn U.S. sit like singular U.S. states over. <laughs> um, and, I, I have <laughs> just been informed by chat hmm. that I am a dumbass. The Cold War also featured a bunch of espionage attacks. Uh, yes, yes, lots of them. Um... <laughs> You know, and it's a, if that comes up at any point, I'll answer that one. <laughs> um, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna go with. Uh... See, my other thoughts are: is West Virginia that have their own winter clothing and ammo, um, and D kind of dovetails in with A. So I'm gonna go with a bridge. Final answer. A bridge. Final answer. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm sorry, sir, but that is correct. Yeah. <laughs> that is in fact correct. In 1974, a bridge went down to West Virginia, and after three years, the state had refused to repair and bring this bridge back up to standard. In a desperate attempt, they reached out to the USSR for help rebuilding their bridge. And surprisingly enough, they actually sent an entire team of engineers as a form of humanitarian aid 
to help bringing back the bridge. Oh, that makes sense as well, because they can be like, look how shitty the U.S. is. They can't even repair their own bridge. We had to do it for them. Now, the story gets even better because it what, what an hour after the engineers from the USSR arrived on site, the state tried to send them away, saying, we'll fix the bridge, just send the Russians away. <laughs> yeah, because they realized what it would look like if they let them repair the bridge. <laughs> But isn't isn't Amazing. isn't that also just like another um what's the word I'm looking for? Like shining example of the US is no we're not gonna help. Oh, someone is gonna help and make us look bad. Never mind. We've always wanted to help. <laughs> it's not they don't have the resource. It's just they have better things to do with the resources, like lining their own pockets. Yeah. That's how it is. I how am I supposed to gold play <laughs> my boat if we keep fixing all these bridges? Oh goodness, I couldn't even imagine I'm sorry. You you wanted to go to you wanted to go to the you wanted to go to um El Sawyer's hooting nanny down the road. You're going to have to wait until we're finished uh, buying this yacht. I'm sorry. <laughs> you are correct. It is, in fact, a bridge. Although, unfortunately, I do not have the follow up on if they actually did build that bridge or not. I, I feel like in the video I watched, they did. Okay. Um, but, I, but don't quote me on that. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. So far, we are about halfway through the quiz. How are you feeling? You've done surprisingly well, which makes me disappointed in myself. <laughs> How are you feeling? I mean, I'd say blame it less on yourself and blame it more on me watching just hours and hours and hours of useless videos. Um, are you history now? What the hell's wrong with you? Come on, oh, get a lie. <laughs> history? No, there was a section for like, I think an entire month in college where the entire time I was doing animations, I had... I had my animations on the bottom screen as I was drawing them, and on the mm -hmm. top screen, because our, our computer lab had, like, uh, Wacom's and, and screens, and the top was just, like, an unending playlist of Drugs, Inc. <laughs> and I learned a shit ton from that, and then it, it... Then, yes, you're right, it dovetailed immediately into, like, um, gangster history and a bunch of other things. Um, but no, there, there's so many, like, nature and, like, space and the... There's so many useless facts I have bouncing around in my head. So it's you trying to uh, suss out which of those I don't know, basically. Oh, well, lucky <laughs> for you. I somehow was able to order them by level of, I don't remember if I did my level of difficulty or my level of ridiculous, but I'm assuming it's a combination of the two. So hopefully it'll actually get harder as we go on. Cause I think right now you're about three for five, four for five, something, something like that. Ones. I've hit the, the amount I was hoping for. You've also, surprisingly well. Also, Matt is, I've never been to West Virginia, uh, but I, that doesn't surprise me. I've never really heard anything about the Virginias. I've been to a decent amount of places in America at this point, haven't I? Uh, New York, New York, Chicago, Philadelphia, Boston, Hawaii. You uh, may as well been more places than I have. Actually, that, that's it. <laughs> oh, no, maybe not. No, that's fair, Matt. It's like, like I, I would expect Americans to understand America better than me. I, I know some stuff. I know stuff about Canada, but <laughs> all I know about Canada is their grand maple syrup heist, and then also yeah, <laughs> that was also the the thing that always surprised me about the grand maple syrup heist is just the fact that it was so recent. It was fairly recent. It was within the two thousand. Yeah, like, yeah. Ten years ago. Uh... Over the course of like. Three years, I think it was. Yeah, yeah, because they, they were millions of dollars with a maple syrup in the Canadian res uh, maple syrup maple reservoir. Syrup reserves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which sounds like a joke, but you know, <laughs> it was an actual thing. And you know, in the suit, yeah, Mountain Mama, Take Me Home, Country Roads, but that's legitimately all I know about Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> West Virginia, Country Mama. Oh, there you go, dead goggles. Uh, no, that's fair. I mean, you know, there, there's we've got places <laughs> like that up in Canada as well where. Uh, I'm curious if it's the same in Virginia, but the Virginia has the Appalachian Mountains, so maybe not, right? But one of my favorite things is if you go to, like, the middle of Canada, so, like, Saskatchewan, Alberta, Manitoba, like, it's a shot, it's so flat, you can literally be, like, looking down the road and see a storm coming, uh, for, like, five hours. Are we the reason the Geneva Convention exists? I actually don't know if that's true, Mattis. <laughs> I didn't even know Canada had any flat land. Oh, so yeah, yeah. We've, got, to me. we've got three uh, provinces that are all, like, ludicrously flat. Um, huh. I, hmm, I'm shocked and not shocked by that, Mattis. 
because I do know from watching a lot of history documentaries that, um, yeah, exactly, and that's what I was gonna say that like we were known for being unhinged lunatics in World War One. Um, you guys, I, you've come a long way to the respectable maple stirring moose riding people you are today. No, no, we just took all of that and we just funneled it into hockey. <laughs> um, and then that's basically where it stayed. But yeah, it's no, the like national sport after all. And then the funniest thing too is that I know that like the majority of the things that like people are like, oh yeah, like the Canadians did some crazy shit is like Newfoundland, which is like the East Coast. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe that's right, Mattis. We just sent them all out to die in World War One, and then it calmed <laughs> us down. Uh, I still maintain it was hockey though. <laughs> oh my goodness! Are you ready for the next question, sir? Yes. Question. Number six. In the early 1900s, the idea of a nationwide prohibition of alcohol was being was being made a very serious debate matter. In the 1920s, the United States effectively went dry. No alcohol whatsoever. How did the government choose to enforce this decision of a nationwide prohibition? Was it A, excessive arrests by local police? Was it B, coupons for law-abiding citizens who proved they did not have alcohol? Was it C, poisoning the al alcohol supply <laughs> at its source from the alcohol mountain ranges of the Northeast? Or was it D, they did it. It was a figment of their imagination that something actually happened. <laughs> my first, the first thought in my head was, "Oh, so you you all have the alcohol reserves, or we have the maple syrup reserves?" <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I don't think it was. See, like in the early nineteen hundreds, yeah. I know that they rounded up a lot of people. Prohibition, but I don't know if they were arrested. That's the thing. <laughs> I'm I'm swapping between no, that's fair, Mattis, because if you if you do know it, then then yeah. <laughs> um this is uh what's it called? Like I I'm switching between A and D. Um A and D? Yeah, because A I feel like happened, but D feels really on point. Um, let's see. I will... One would say they are both on point, given the United States government. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll Currently, go... They definitely do a lot of arrests. Were they as known for these excessive arrests in the early 1900s? I'm going to do two things right now. I'm going to say D, they did nothing. Um, okay. And then I'm going to stop looking at your chats. <laughs> <laughs> All right, final answer D. The government did nothing. The states went dry, but they actually did not. That is the wrong answer. Ah, oh, okay, okay, okay. Sorry. That's fair, that's fair. Um, so yeah, Mattis, you can put yours in now, and then uh, I'll start looking at the chat once <laughs> once we've finished the this part. Um, You're phoning a friend through my chat. No, I just I just said I'm not looking at your chat. <laughs> For you. <laughs> oh, you said D, you thought D as well, Mattis? Even the cops were hammered. That is not correct. I'm sorry okay. to say, Mattis, you are also wrong. Oh, I popped up the song. <laughs> you are also incorrect. The answer is not D. Okay, so like to make a second guess. Yeah, my second guess, I'm bouncing. Eliminate an answer for you. No, no, that's fine. Um, I'm bouncing between A and B. I don't think they'd be stupid enough to poison their own constituents. Um, mm -hmm. but they might take an egg in this trying time. I don't know why I'm saying this. I know everyone won't get the reference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, well, egg in a trying time? Yeah, yeah, like, it's, uh, <laughs> the TV like show. You egg their houses as a way of showing, like, uh, solitude. No, it's the unhinged like, lunacy of the show. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I don't know anything about Philadelphia. You know what, Mattis, that's also true. It could depend on what state it was. Uh, very, okay, a, a or B? B also sounds kind of in line of just like how how completely inane it would be, um, but because I feel like there's a bit of historical preference for it, I'm gonna go with A for my second answer. Too many arrests. Going with A. All right. That is incorrect. Ah! <laughs> well, incorrect twice. <laughs> there probably were arrests, 
But that is not how they enforced it. Okay, so it was coupons? Answer. <laughs> you really think the U.S. is that kind to its people? Oh my god, it was poor. I, I legitimately wouldn't have believed it was poor. Oh my <laughs> god, that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> After an estimated 60 million gallons of alcohol were stolen annually, the Treasury Department ordered many manufacturers to pull poison their own alcohol with additives, creating denatured alcohol to discourage consumption. Bootleg chemists found ways to recover the alcohol and re-nurture it. Even deadlier poison, making it even worse and eventually ending up in a number of deaths. Jeez. The intentional poisoning of the U.S. government of industrial alcohols led to the paralysis and death of thousands of drinkers, specifically those who were trying to bootleg their beverages from non-official sources. And Damn. one particular concoction made from industrial alcohol, I believe it was dubbed Ginger Lake, was reportedly responsible for crippling up to... Drum roll, please. Oh, I can do it. 100,000 American drinkers. And all in all, it is estimated that approximately 10,000 people were killed by drinking poisoned hall, uh, poisoned, <laughs> poisoned alcoholic drinks during this time period. Damn. And that wasn't even the last time they poisoned their people. Isn't it terrible? <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. I can't believe I didn't remember Agent Orange, Orange until now. I should have known it was poisoning. <laughs> Oof. Oh, well. It, so, when you run a country, you tend to have a lot of the same trains to thought. Oh. It's how you act on them that separates you from other places. That's fair. Also, you're... Certainly, we shared a lot with Asian cultures at this one point in time. <laughs> <laughs> fair, <laughs> fair. I was going to say, I, I don't know if your chat can hear it, but on my end, your audio is kind of turning into a robot. It's turning into a robot. Roomba's chat, how does he, how does hey, he sound for all of you? My stream did drop for a second, so it may have actually stopped. Oh, okay. It looks like my stream's back up, at the very least. There, I turned off, I turned off my AC. Maybe it'll make it a little bit crisp, a little bit better sounding. <laughs> Time will tell. Fair, fair, fair. All right, on to question. Number seven. Behold, in 1784, 13 states were designated as the first states within America, and thus the creation of the United States. However, there was almost a 14th state. What was the name of this 14th state? Was it A, Confederal? Was it B, Frankland? Was it C, Greater Maroomba, or was it D, George Lington? <laughs> I, I, I mean, C is the fake answer. I can already tell C is the fake answer. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's wrong with C? What's C? What's wrong with Greater Maroomba? <laughs> C, C is wish fulfillment. <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong with that? Just because I don't want to maybe uh, wanting a nation named after me and maybe, you know, people to worship. I mean, what does that mean? What does that have to be a fake answer? What's wrong? There's nothing wrong with that. Also, shut up. It's not fake. <laughs> Definitely not fake. I, I've just got to say, I hate all these names. <laughs> and those, you know, oh, man, I... Uh -huh. My brain's not where I don't know. I hate all these all these names so much. I'm glad they never went with any Honestly, of them. Honestly, this one I would never expect you to get us to expect. No, 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 it no. It seems so ridiculous I, across the board. No, I know, but I want to I want to do this on hard mode at least for the first one. Uh, oh, there has to at least be like like a yeah, shred yeah. of logic. Apparently, Madison's within heard this, this question before. <laughs> oh, fair. Um. <clears throat> 13 states. 
Ooh, and now my own history is like starting to break up in my head a little bit because I'm I, in my head I'm like, <laughs> when was the Declaration of Independence signed? I legitimately don't know. I had a question uh, about that. We had that earlier. 1776. Oh, okay, so it was after. So this so was would they be, not even 10 years after. So would they be stupid enough to name it after their first president? Uh, would that even be considered stupid? Uh, oh, that's interesting. It was absolutely not in Canadian civics, but I can see it being in American c civics. I'm, uh, oh, but Franklin as well, because Benjamin Franklin, right? I'm going to go with... D first, and then we'll see if in second answer we'll see <laughs> if I get this wrong. But let's say George Lington. D first. Yes. George Lington. That is incorrect, my Damn. answer. Damn. Okay. Franklin or Confederal? Confederal sounds like a a bad drink. Oh no no! I didn't misspell anything. I didn't misspell anything, Mattis. So I'll get to that. Don't worry. I'm going to go with Confederal because it sounds stupider out of the two. <laughs> that is unfortunately also incorrect. Damn, was it Franklin? Really? The answer. <laughs> the correct answer was B, Franklin. Oh my God. <laughs> happy with North Carolina's governance over the area, frontiersmen from the region sought to establish their land as a separate independent state called Franklin. In 1785, they petitioned Congress for statehood. And seven out of the 13 existing U.S. provinces, provinces voted in favor. But because it was less than the two-thirds majority required by the Articles of Confederation, it did not pass. So in an my... attempt to bolster their petition... Oh, go ahead. No, 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 keep going. Okay. In an attempt to bolster their petition to get the last couple votes, Franklin leaders changed the name of their area to Franklin. F-R-A... Uh... A N K L I N, in an attempt to garner support from the founding father, Benjamin Franklin, mm. who proceeded to call them all dumbasses. <laughs> yeah, because I was going to say, like, what, what confuses me and there after is. a conflict with the North Carolina admission. Mm. Hello? Oh, you got out there. Hello? Oh, no, I, apparently I lost internet. Oh, <laughs> rip. My stream also died. I'm back. Stream's not back. Rip. It'll be back soon. Probably. <laughs> I thought Hopefully. I fixed this issue. I didn't, obviously. At I mean, least I know it is my ISP. All right. My... Oh. Oh. <laughs> Who knows? My it... stream came back for half a second and then it dipped again. Uh oh. Who knows? It's uh strange percent of the time it seems to be something outside of your control. Oh. We back, we cooking again. Uh yeah, I I going to assume we are we are back. It's very low quality, but it's back. It'll <laughs> it'll go back up. Fair, fair. But yes. Um, they started as Franklin and then they did rename to Franklin later on. I see. And and that's what was confusing to me was it was like, so you're going to try and name your you're going to try and name yourself after someone who lives in the then capital. But mm -hmm. you're doing it because you aren't happy with how that capital's governing is going. That's in my head. That's what eliminated it. But that's oh. <laughs> <laughs> very fair. But ne that land was eventually, the government collapsed, I think about five years after the vote um, and went back to North Carolina, who decided they don't want it after all, <laughs> and then eventually became part of Tennessee. <laughs> Jeez, okay. <laughs> Would you like, do uh, want another fun fact? Sure. About Franklin and Frankland. Sure, Are you familiar not? with the folk story, Davy Crockett? Yes. Folk hero Davy Crockett was actually born in the state of Franklin, and his father was a passionate Franklinite. Oh. But did he also cut Not down bad. trees in one swing like uh, Paul Bunyan? <laughs> I couldn't tell you. I never read it. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair. Now you're trapped in Franklin. My, my condolences, sir. Listen, I'll get you out of here. I'll get you out. I have a plan. I have barrels. Um, I just have to figure out how to roll them all the way over across the country. <laughs> just, just give me some time, sir. <laughs> 
All right. On to question number eight. Between eight, between 1850s, somewhere between the 1850s, the city of Chicago had horrible issues with their sewage water being stagnant, resulting in numerous epidemics. What was their solution to their predicament? Was it A, to toss a bunch of mints into their sewer line? Was it B, <laughs> to recruit an army of beavers to dam up the sewer system? Was it C, to raise the city on thousands of stilts? Or was it D, to dig a hole to the center of the earth and drain the sewage down there? Okay. The only things I know about, <laughs> the Chicago, about Chicago and its river, which I learned while I was there, is that at one point the river was so filthy it was set on fire and burned for like, <laughs> I think it was like a week. Um, that is in fact a correct thing. Yeah, so originally I thought that was going to be that the answer. That was the thing that happened. <laughs> <laughs> um... No, but what this is unrelated, although it may have given rise to the reason they needed to fix it. I do not know when that fire started. <laughs> so, let's see. Hold the center of the earth, considering, you know, John Quincy Adams does sound vaguely, um, vaguely realistic. However, however, mm. I'm I, in my head, I'm knocking out Beaver Army. Because I, I think as funny as that would be, I don't think that they would have thought that um, uh, able to be done. Uh... Maybe it was a bit too much of a Canadian answer for this. <laughs> yeah, that's our stuff. Um... <laughs> so in, in my head, like mints, it sounds ridiculous, but it does definitely sound like something they would do to be like, yeah, that'll fix it. Um... Mm hmm. But for some reason in my head, I, I'm equivalating stilts with not the ones that you use for walking, but the ones that you use to build frameworks to lift things. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I... I feel like there was something when I was in Chicago that I, I remember reading on some plaque somewhere about something being raised near the river. So based off of that <laughs> fragmented memory... Uh, my first answer is going to be C, thousands of stilts. <laughs> that is correct. Oh, OK. <laughs> the answer is, in fact, C, thousands of stilts. This is a long <laughs> one, so buckle in, everybody. At the time, the elevation of Chicago area was a little bit higher than the shoreline of Lake Michigan, the nearest Great Lake, for two Two decades following the city's incorporation, drainage from the city surface was inadequate, resulting in the two large bodies of standing pathogenic water to form, all being, of course, sewage. Uh. In 1856, engineer Elise S. Chesborough drafted a plan for the installation of a citywide sewage system and submitted it to the Common Council, which did end up adopting the plan. Workers hmm. laid drains, covered and refinished roads and sidewalks with several feet of soil and raised most buildings on screw jacks to the new grade, roughly six feet above the initial level. Unfortunately, most of the city's old wooden buildings were not considered to be raised. So they actually had to demolish those wooden buildings or move them to the outskirts of the city in instead. Oh, okay, okay. Interesting. Also, it's just, I don't know if everyone was answerable about with this it. Entire but... <laughs> sure, sure. Oh, I can see your right. mouth moving, but I can't the hear fun anything. Fact oh. <laughs> is that once the city was lifted by their six feet, all of their sewage started to reverse flow oh. <laughs> towards St. Louis. Huh. <laughs> so they just kind of Real accidentally bad. on purpose diverted the problem. St. Louis appreciated this gesture so much that they then bottled up the sewage and sold it back to Chicago as beer. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a rumor. St. Louis did in fact sue the city of Chicago 
in federal court. Went into the Mississippi River past them instead. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> the also unfortunate thing was that um, St. Louis lost their lawsuit about Chicago. Oh my God. Because they were also dumping their sewage into the Mississippi River <laughs> and couldn't prove that their own water quality was degraded after the fact. Oh my God. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Isn't that yeah. exciting? <laughs> that makes so Terrible much sense. sewage all around. <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, that, that was the one fact that I retained from Chicago, was the river was so filthy it caught fire for multiple days. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Damn. It is not the grades of infrastructure plans. Yeah. And now... <laughs> it's what they agreed on. And now they've learned their lesson, and so dump gallons of green paint into said river for St. Patrick's Day instead. Oh, uh, gosh. <laughs> I like to think they're using environmental dye now, but I honestly have no idea. I don't know either. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Are you ready? Question yes. number nine. Da, 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 da. Question nine. In the fall of 1922, a series of small scale riots ended up converging into a much larger riot in New York City and caused many, many arrests and even a handful of deaths. What do you think the riot was about? Was it A, <laughs> straw hats? Was it B, public transit? Was it C, stray beads? Or was it D, the next Hokage? <laughs> So, it's been a little while, I suppose, but unfortunately, uh -huh. I already know the answer to this one. <laughs> so if your chat wants to make a couple of guesses, oh. <laughs> uh, ends... All right, chat, what, what do you say? <laughs> what do you think the answer is? Because specifically when you said it, I, when I saw the answers, what? I went, oh yeah. It's in New York City. <laughs> Why is the last question the one you know? Oh, is this the last was one? Not obscure enough. Oh. Was it, what was it? Something I said? What? <laughs> no, it was nothing no, you said. That. I didn't say anything. Um. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, it's, it's none of them have had the correct answer. Um, uh, my chat is dead. So what? what it's it's fair. I think I think it might be because your stream is dead. I can't tell. Uh. Having a thing where... Yeah, I think there might be a problem. Another problem with your stream? I'm not 100%. Oh, it is, Dad. So we'll give it a second to, to see if it comes back. But um, I will say... I'm definitely calling my ASB after this. Dads! <laughs> <laughs> um, because, yeah, like, basically, I, uh, I'll, I was watching a video a while back, and when I tell you what the name... I'll, I'll wait until I, after we've done the answer. Um, but... The name of the the name of the video like had this riot's full name, and so and then went into the things about it, um, so that's why I know it. But also while we are waiting for Roomba stream to come back, which I think it might in a second, um, Mattis, the thing that we're trying to do is that if people enjoyed this one, no, I I'm hmm? gonna be honest, I don't think my stream's coming back. Let alone the fact it's not even trying anymore. I can't Ooh. even access Google. Ooh, okay. Um, well, I can so, still hear you and I can still see your is chat. Completely so. dead. So what? What I'll say okay, then, before everything fully collapses into the sea, is, um, Mattis, if if you if uh, everybody here enjoyed this or would like to see a different version, um, what we were thinking next week because uh, we have to wait for Shadows of the Earth Trees, see, um, the seamless co-op DLC creator to. Uh, either make a patch or a new version, we're assuming for that. Uh, so we might try next week is kind of a different version of this where I try to teach Roomba about Warhammer 40k stuff and we do like maybe an hour or two discussion on that and then I quiz them at the end of that. Um, so if anybody listening is a Warhammer 40k fan and wants mm -hmm. to uh, see oh, Roomba try and... Up, but it's not good. Uh, well, that's a, you know... <laughs> So that's at least an in-between. Um, but yeah, if, if people are interested in, in 
watching Roomba try to absorb a whole bunch of Warhammer information for an hour or so, and then see how much he retained. Um, and we might try that. We'll see how that goes. But um, yeah, if you, it looks like your stuff is back up. Uh, so yeah, I am going to yeah. go yeah. with <laughs> what I remember off the top of my head, which is the Straw Hat Riot of 1922, uh, which started of all things because they put in a law uh, that ruled that people, I think men weren't supposed to wear them after the fall. And then enough people were mocked about not following the law that it started a riot. You might, you might have more info on that than me, but that's what I remember from the mm -hmm. uh, the video I watched. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that's 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 correct. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is A is straw hats. No, um, you know what's funny? So what what basically went down was. Mm. <laughs> oh no! Uh, so all I was gonna say was. Uh, the reason I, I saw all of this stuff was because I watched a video that was called The 15 Craziest Things Straw Hats Have Done, and it was, uh, like a One Piece related video. <laughs> of course it was. A oh, god. Oh, so, yeah. I was hoping, oh, it's a One Piece reference, he'll never know it. And then I was like, oh, because of the raw foot straw, he actually knows it. Oh, I'm so drama. I, <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> yes. It was, in fact, Straw Hats, the Straw Hat Riots of 1922. There was a tradition of that following the change of the seasons. Um, as summer ends and fall begins, it is tradition for Straw Hats to be put away and replaced with felt ones. However, to it, due to a series of teenage men wearing their Straw Hats past the unofficial date that was deemed socially acceptable, um, a num they were arrested which led to a lot of riots and including a couple of deaths. Oof. Um, there was even a couple people that were murdered over the fact of their choice to wear a straw hat. Oh my God. It wasn't until the 1930s, roughly eight years after the fact, when seasonal hats went away and uh, the, what is it? The Panama hat became more fashionable and everyone just wore it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Man, imagine dying for a straw hat. Isn't that... When real life feels like One Piece. Also, yeah, <laughs> absolutely One Piece yeah, reference. But, I mean, <laughs> it's not the greatest. Don't, isn't it crazy that New York uh, dropped great, predictions that... for uh, One Piece in 1922? God. God. Alright, <laughs> my stream's against. So let's wrap this up. Last that's fair, that's question! Fair. Uh, there is no more question. The end! <laughs> Finish! Yay! <laughs> Cheers! Uh, <laughs> a cursed stream for a cursed quiz. <laughs> well, maybe I should have had the foresight to record it straight to my PC so I wouldn't, I could re upload it, but I didn't. So that's not going to happen. I mean, it, it's, like it's hard to say. Quiz, you can view it. Yeah. If you like this quiz, if you want to see the full thing without terrible, terrible connection issues, <laughs> I recommend you view the full video on Voice Voice Force Gaming uh, Twitch channel. Uh, they will have the bot up there. I will probably download that from their end and put it up on my own channel if they're okay with me still their content because I know they don't have a YouTube. You don't have a YouTube, <laughs> right? Please say you don't have a YouTube. Uh, we do have a YouTube, but we don't put the VODs on it right now, so you got it. Okay. That's fine. Possibly then. It's it's a chance. We will see what we can do. <laughs> but that that will do it for this stream. Any any closing thoughts? Uh no, this was fun, honestly. Um, you know, despite the technical issues, which is super unfortunate. Uh you know, uh -huh. it, it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm happy with how many I got right. Um I'm a little bit surprised with some of them, like Center of the Earth, I wasn't expecting to get right at all. Um <laughs> but yeah, no, overall, I think, good job. I, I'm pretty happy uh, with how this all turned out. Uh, it gives me some ideas for, like I said, if uh, either of our chats are interested in me talking about Warhammer for an hour and then uh, trying to make you remember some of it, uh, then, you know, maybe we'll try that next week. Or we can always try the Super Cursed quiz. And then, you know, as long as I'm prepared for the fact that everything's going to be what I don't think it's going to be, then eh, who knows? <laughs> 
I need to figure out if that one got lost in the 13 crashes that happened or if that was irrelevant. Ooh, that's fair. That's fair. And I saved it beforehand. I'll have to figure out where that is. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> anyway, thank you all for coming. Have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening. And I guess until the next one. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.